Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. You got myself, Noir Wes. I'm a designer here from Adafruit. Joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. What's, what's up, man? What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Wes, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to share 3D printing designs featuring electronics from Adafruit. <laughs> That's right. This is a show where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics. We smash them together to make inspirational projects for you folks at home. That's right. Every week, we have a lovely assortment of segments. Let's go ahead and run through those. We start off with... Paying some bills. That's you want right. to pay the this, bills? This week's coupon code for 10% off off of almost everything in the Adafruit shop, except okay. gift certificates and software is LuxPad. Use that, use the discount code during checkout. It's 10% right. off. And of course, oh. we also got... <laughs> I keep saying, that's right. We got a comment about saying that, so we're going to really try really hard not to say that. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We, we still got our uh, freebies. Um, oh my goodness. On. We have even more freebies. Um, yeah. So tell size, us about this. Half size Protoma Proto for any uh, order over $100. $150 gets you a free trinket, 5 volt, $200 or more. You get free UPS ground shipping. And I think one that's not in the slide, I don't know if we still even have these, the custom made DigiKey PCB ruler at $125, I believe. It's $125. It says right there for a little bit of time, Adafruit is proud to offer a free Adafruit plus DigiKey PCB ruler for orders. 125. And this is a pretty, pretty nice last ruler. last one, $200, you get all of that, oh. free shipping, right. all those goodies added, right, right, right. So automatically get, added to your cart. You can't even take you them out take if you don't out. want yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I would say, you know, get them now before supplies last. Today is December 10th, so that means tomorrow is December 11th, which is one of the last days to get UPS ground standard shipping. So right after that, you're going to have to pay for um, two day, overnight, two-day shipping air, air, air which is uh, quite costly. But if you want to get your gifts in time, order now. The Adafruit elves are working very, very hard. All the shipping people, very, oh very, God. very yeah, hard. They are working. Yeah, like hours. nonstop, like more than Santa's elves. So <laughs> please get some stuff. I think support we hired Adafruit. All of those away from Santa. That's right. So again, <laughs> that is code LuxPad, which is actually a new product that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. later in the segment. So let's go ahead and run through the segments. Let's not dilly-dally. There we go. What are you prototyping? So we take a look at future projects we're working on for a future episode. Future, future. You got the Lair Belair. So we take a look at some of the CAD techniques that we use for designing all of our projects. We're going to talk about the shop. Shop talk. We're going to talk about stuff going on in the shop. Yep. And then uh, Q&A. If you guys got any questions, leave them below in any of the videos, and we'll gather them up and answer them in a future episode. Community, community makes. Community makes is when we take a look at some rock stars in the community making awesome projects. Awesome people from the community making awesome projects. So let's go ahead and jump into what are you prototyping? So uh, if you guys checked out Show and Tell every uh, week, last week, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m., definitely stop by on Google Plus. It's when we um, always show up, talk about all the things that we're working on. A lot of people stop by and show off their cool projects as well. So definitely stop by, say hi. You previewed this very awesome future project. That's right. This is uh, NeoPixel, NeoPixel Ring headphones. So basically, we made a 3D printed enclosure for you. And uh, this is actually inspired from uh, Becky's project that she made like three years ago, it, uh, where she took uh, some, some Skull Candy headphones and she hacked them to make her own using uh, Flora pixels. She put, put them together in a ring and used like a Flora, I think. So I figured I would upgrade this project and add some NeoPixel rings because the NeoPixel rings were still being manufactured when she made that project. Yeah, so this is the 16 NeoPixel ring. 16 NeoPixel ring. Instead of using a normal, um, a normal, uh, instead of using Flora or Gemma or even a trinket, I figured, you know what? Let's, let's use a brand new feather board. Let's use BLE. a feather board. So let's take a look at the, the thing here. Um, so that's on prototyping. It's a quick enclosure. This is actually this week's Lair by Lair segment. I show you guys how to put together the uh, the NeoPixel ring and the feather board so that we can design around it. Um, it's a pretty interesting project. Um, uh, the main things about it is that it's, of course, using the Blue Fruit uh, module, the feather board, so that you can control and change uh, the animations and colors using the uh, the mobile app, the, the Connect LE app, the Adafruit. Probably Blue should Fruit. have had it queued up so you could see the app right on your phone. Yep, see but all the that's all right. Color changing. We're still working on that. Um, so. The other thing is that it has a 500 milliamp battery on the other side. And the cool thing is these little guys uh, pop dual right print. off, and they are dual printed. So this is actually uh, dual printed using transparent PLA and black, uh, I think, black PLA PHA. And you can see the, the, the microcontroller in there. 
and you have access to the USB port. Wires are coming out here, and they just go over the headphone. A really non-destructive way for your headphones, like if you don't want to take apart your headphones or if you can't take them apart, uh, it's a pretty cool project because you can still um, you can still take it off and use it. One of the coolest things I think about this is that it has the LiPo charger built sure. in, tree, right. built in already. That's the awesome thing the about the, all the feather boards is they have a lot of built-in stuff. Exactly, yeah. So, so very awesome little compact design. The way that you design this to hold everything inside of there. Sure. Very still working awesome on it. Code. Um, you, you guys will see in the lab or lair um, how, how I'm putting it together. And it's a two-parter, so we'll, we'll have that next week as well. Um, very nice little on and off switch on the back yep. of there. Yeah. So, you know, the little Great things can pop off. Uh, PT was saying, you know, maybe we should make an Adafruit logo or an Apple logo or Beats logo or something like that. So we'll see. But anyway, um, if Very you cool want to pick addition. up the Feather board, I think it is still in stock. And the, I think the last I checked, the NeoPixel rings were out of stock. So sorry about that. But, you know, we're, try we're trying to get them manufactured as fast as we can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that, that's what we're prototyping. Um, were we going to talk about the, the, the thing? Some feedback on the yeah. Pi Zero. All right, so let's talk about the Pi Zero. Um, so I released the Pi Zero case uh, not too long ago, and um, I actually had uh, some community feedback on, uh, on what we should do. So when I released it, I like, had quite a few people print it out for us which is awesome, thank you guys for printing it. And it gave me an opportunity to take some of the uh, feedback from the community and uh, apply it to the case. So it's been updated like 10 times now, so this is the Pi Zero case. Um, I've already tested it out. Uh, the main thing, the first thing I did with it was make an Octoprint rig for the, uh, for the Ultimaker, so that was really fun, it worked really well. But I, had to, I only have one, so I had to unplug it, and here it is now. <laughs> uh, so the main thing uh, I did was add screws. So I only have two of them in there, but uh, you know, you could, you could use all four, but I turned the pegs into screws because uh, a couple of folks are saying that the pegs were breaking off, and I agree, sometimes the pegs can break off. Did and upload both version, I did updated versions up to versions. the thing I received, so, so let's take a look. check that out. Let's take a look real quick um, at that, at the people who made it, or should I do that for the community make? Uh, Probably for the community make. Let me, for the community make. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and jump into the Lair Lair segment. So um, I thought I'd put together a quick little tip on how, to, how, I com how I made the holes like in one operation, and I even added some threads. So that's pretty cool. So uh, here's the enclosure. Of course, the design is available you know, to download and, and modify. Um, so I got the links, of course, for you. So the first thing I did was I copied and pasted it. Um, obviously, you want to have a, a, a copy version of it. So I just did a straight copy and paste, and then just named it with holes. So you know which one is which. And um, Somebody uh, in the comments actually said, you know, you should try using the holes feature, which I'll show in a second. But I actually want to say that um, tolerances are always different on printers. So I actually had the pegs set to 2.6 millimeters. They're actually supposed to be 2.5 for, for super accuracy. That's the measurement of the mounting holes on the board itself. So I figured I'd do that, and I'd update the standoffs to be a little bit thicker. So I changed it from 5 to 6 millimeters. So that's easy to do. Everything updates through it because it's, it's done through one operation when I uh, extruded it. So when I was using uh, the hole, the, the hole feature is under create, and then you click on hole, and you get a little description there. Um, when you have it set to the multiple placement, there's, a, there's an option to have one hole or multiple holes. When I set the multiple holes, I was, like, I was clicking around. I was like wondering, well, why isn't this working? Because when you, when you select the first one, you can pick anywhere, any surface, and then, and then it just automatically creates your, your hole, and then you can move it around. But the thing is, when you're using the multiple version, you actually have to have a sketch. So you have to tell it. You have to have a dot specifically. And luckily, because the way I designed it with sketches, I have the dots already there. So all I did was click on that, click on all four of them, and it automatically creates um, the hole for you. Um, so you got a couple options. Obviously, you have the hole type. It's a countersink. So it has a little chamfer at the bottom. So you don't have to do two operations. You can just do it in one. It's dynamic. So I have the depth. The depth is just cutting all the way through. So it really doesn't matter. The tip angle is like the tip of the cut, which doesn't matter either because we're cutting all the way through it. And the main thing that was important was the countersink diameter, which is five. And that's pretty much it. I applied it. And there's our holes. If I ever need to change them, I can just double click in the, tr in the parameter and edit that one feature. Another thing I wanted to test out was the thread feature. So you can actually apply threads. And I really don't ever use it too much because um, we'll get, well, I'll show you a little bit later. So you can hold down the command, sheet, the command key on Mac or Control on PC to uh, select multiple surfaces. 
Obviously, it only works on, on, uh, on cylinders. So there's the thread. You get a ton of profiles. So if you're doing uh, isometric is obviously what I'm doing here. But later on, I change it to um, Imperial, and it's 2.5. There's a uh, design here is, I think, just different types of thread. I'm not too sure which, uh, which one is the correct one. So I just opted in for the very first one, which is uh, 0.35. The other one was 0.25. And you notice that it's actually just a photo. Until you click that checkbox that says modeled, it won't actually apply it. So you have to click that button. Uh, I, thought it would, I thought it would apply it after when I export it out. So there you go. And there's another thing, I think class, which I don't know too much. But there you go. Um, I applied it there. And now I have holes with actual threads. So the, like I was saying, the threads are really high resolution. The chamfer at the bottom is applied already for you. Um, more Excuse used me. for like milling, uh, we're guessing. It's here. definitely used for milling, too. Um, so for 3D printing, um, I exported it out, and I imported it into Fusion, uh, not Fusion, um, I exported it thank you, S3D, which is our favorite slicer. Definitely recommend it. Um, and I wanted to see uh, how, how good of the resolution is at, at 100 microns. Since it has a really powerful uh, preview engine, I wanted to see you know, how, 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 how does this going to look like? How's this going to work? Because uh, obviously, when you print it out, it kind of already has threads, and you just tap them yourself. So uh, with our uh, profile set, I'm taking a look here, and it kind of looks like it's just staggering. Like it's just like kind of stacking them up and then and then offsetting them a little bit. So I wasn't too sure how it would work. Um, and this is 100 microns. Of course, we could do 50 microns on the Ultimaker, but uh, most printers out there um, can can go down to 100, and that's where you want to stay at. So there it is, 100. And um, when I printed it out, I realized I actually don't have any 2.5 millimeter screws. Yeah, but uh, the threads <laughs> did look like it did print yeah, out Yeah, I think they did. And then so what I did was I actually printed it out. I updated the thread to, to be um, the Imperial 440s, because in the States here, we have 440 screws. Um, and they, they work pretty well. Um, it's 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 a definitely you don't have to tap them, but you still have to you know force your screw in there. But at least it has a little bit of uh, of uh, of a tap in the beginning, so you can get that thread going in there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so it works. I recommend uh, using it. I'm going to start using it a lot more. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's a lot more secure, so it is on Thingiverse, and you can. I would definitely recommend this version, uh, unless you don't have any screws. You don't have any screws, and you know check out the peg version, but it could break. It didn't break on mine because you know our printer and our slice settings are pretty pretty tuned in there. Yeah, we also wanted to do some tests also on the amber and oh, see yes. what do the threads actually look like if we print it at 25 and 10 microns. That's right. So here's what it looks like using the standard PR48 material. Oops. And at first we <laughs> used the support material inside of Print Studio, which is a lot better in terms of um, just the, the way that you're able to to remove the support material. Yeah, this is a great test spongy. for spongy. It came out a little bit more easier. Uh, definitely more, um, like, easier to remove than doing it, like, inside of Mesh Mixer. You're doing it by hand here? Oh, you still clip it, but you can still kind of remove it by hand in chunks. Yeah, it's just because of how much support material was added to it. In the end, we the second test that we attempted didn't require any support material at all. So um, for printing the small little box like that, it is able to print. Uh, quite well without any support material at all, but here's what it looks like. Then we have a photo of the a close-up of what the threads look like. Yeah, sure. Let me cut to that. Here it is. And here, as you can see, it at 25 microns. Incredible detail. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like milled detail, milling detail. Yeah, so you'd definitely be able to get those screws through there if we had a 2.5 mil <laughs> with screws. We don't have so yeah. Um, yeah, it works using uh, something like a, a DLP SLA. Uh, printer. Yeah, well, it's a great test. Like yeah. um, how long did it take? Did you tell us how long it took to print? Uh, this took, I think, about five hours to print. Five hours, folks. This took Just an because it was hour. 25 microns. This yeah. took an hour because it's at 100 microns. This actually takes 30 minutes if it's yeah. at 0.2 mm -hmm. millimeters. I'm sure if you like mess with the exposure time and the separation time on that, you probably could get it faster. But mm -hmm. I left all the default okay. settings on there. I didn't want to mess yeah. with any of that. But yeah, pretty cool. I think if we spray some of the clear coat enamel on here, that is something we wanted to do. Crystal yeah. clear, see-through um, case on here. Yeah, so it turned out pretty good. Pretty cool, and I'm sure we're already manufacturing some 
uh, injection molded uh, yeah. clear acrylic. So pieces. next time going for enclosures like this, would you would you recommend using support material? No. So the way that we um, had this on the build plate was right up on this this top side here. If you can switch to the overhead. Oh, you want the overhead? Sure. I just pretend my finger is like the um, the build the, plate. It okay. sticks to there like that, and I and I have the porthole on the opposite side so the resin can drain down oh, through there. Oh man, that's cool. So it's like a, a drain, nice little drain tip home. there on that, and that's it. No support material on that. You can see almost transparent. What of course when it's printing, it's completely transparent. Sure. But once you do the um, agitation, put in, yeah, put the salute the alcohol mm -hmm. on there to make it cure. It turns into like a sort of uh, uh, gloss, uh, not gloss, frosted. frosted sort of uh, uh, end look there. But pretty cool. Raspberry Pi. I know you folks are still trying to get one. A lot of folks are. Yeah, and, uh, we should be getting them in stock in about a week or two. I so, hope so definitely yeah. check back. You can, of course, click on the notify me button mm -hmm. on the product page, and you'll be instantly emailed as soon as we have them back in stock. You can go ahead and pick one up. Cool. So that's what uh, we're prototyping plus um, layer by layer. And uh, there you go. <laughs> okay, uh, moving right along. Let's, let's go ahead and check out this week's shop talk. Okay, shop talk. This is, of course, where we talk about some things going on. So over the weekend, Pedro, uh, we updated this, this guy over here, that guy right there. This is the replicator, too. We actually got this right when it got announced. And uh, picked it up, and um, it's it's you know I don't think we've ever had to replace any any physical parts other than a wire. Yeah, a couple of the wires like the Z and the X Y Z cable have uh, blown out on it, but uh, back then the support was super fast. Support was excellent. <laughs> we did have Maker Care, yeah. and um, the first sort of major thing that it wasn't really major, but our SD card stopped uh, the spring stopped uh, locking. So yeah, what we did. Yeah, well, the video shows us taking apart, but I just wanted to cue it up to like, you know, that that's the problem we had. So I've been using tape. Mm -hmm. I've been using tape to hold that thing in there for the past like year or so. Yeah, I think the video actually shows that. No, it doesn't. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't show so, tape. So you took it apart. We took it apart. We took the um, faceplate off, and you can see there that it just will not stay in oh, there. Okay. The spring actually, yeah. um, one of the little small little metal pieces broke on there, which uh, prevented it from locking in place. So if you can see here, um, pretty cool. You can. This see is actually open here. source. You can see the, the most part, yeah. part number on there. Yeah. Modular, you can have. You can see where the control um, little module comes off of there. Yeah, this is a button PCB. Yeah, very interesting little thing here. You could, you were talking about seeing how the last part. We could totally remake this if we needed to. Yeah, now we have NinjaFlex and, con and conductive filaments. So we could actually remake this thing if we wanted to customize it. Yeah. Put a little Adafruit logo on it. <laughs> yeah. So, so the way you I do? fixed this was on the front. There's a little metal cut out there. Just took a pair of uh, tweezers and just bent that out. And you can see the little metal wire there in there that was preventing it from locking in place. So I just bent it in a way where it just stuck um, so this little spring part wouldn't come back out again. And if um, really we're pretty used to not having any springy parts on any of the sure. uh, SD cards. That's anymore, actually so. how this guy works. That's how the re uh, the, res the zero works in design exactly. screen. Just to save on cost, but there you go. That's why it's not yeah, faulty so anymore. So little little piece, all I did was just uh, stick it in there in a way so the spring doesn't kick back. And this was a problem because uh, I've had it where it's printing a print and then like it pops out because the tape mm -hmm. gives away. Because like I was saying, I was using blue tape to hold it in. So thank you, Paige, for fixing it. Replicator Two is still a workhorse. Uh, we use it every now and then in a pinch. Yeah, of uh, course, when everything the else is queued up. Flash Forge Creator Pro is the predecessor. It's basically the same design but yeah. with updated components. And I think for the SD card, it doesn't use the spring anymore. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, so, uh, very cool. OK. We'll upgrade there. Not upgrade, but fix <laughs> to. <Upgrade. laughs> little hacking. <laughs> Bent of wire. That <No>, works. <laughs> OK. So Other things in the shop, we got so now the actual very shop. awesome uh, LuxPad 22 LED panels that yep. we've been talking about. I think we got these in last month to test out. It's pretty cool little LED panels that have the uh, Temperature controller on here, so you can go from 32K to 50K, which means pretty cool blue down to orange. This and is then awesome. You have the brightness adjustment on there too, so they're super um, bright. And the way that the LEDs are arranged, if you're wondering, they're all along the top wanna, uh, part here. Want to show that? Yeah, so all our right. engineer Todd Trace actually took this apart, and you can see what the inside of this guy looks like. Yeah, yeah. there's just a big diffuser in the middle, and they're just aligned in this in the Mm -hmm. uh, around the edges. 
Yeah, so this makes it so you don't need a soft box on top of yeah. it, which makes it um, ver very pleasant, even. Yeah, it's already, um, it's already diffused. Yeah. Yeah. The really cool thing about this is it has this uh, high CRI rating, and um, that means you can basically get better color accuracy when you're taking photos or doing video. Yeah, so it doesn't so you like don't get any flickers. Muddy, it, it's, no not flicker a, it. it's not like a high intense thing. It still gives you a lot of punch, but uh, you can tone that down. So okay. that's the really cool thing about it. So uh, Todd was thinking about how much room is in there and how's this thing working. So he was thinking like it would be really cool to have Bluetooth connectivity. So uh, there's definitely room in there to, f to throw in a, uh, a feather board, a feather uh, blue fruit LE board. So I think that's what he's going to try to do. Um, it's very hacker friendly. Obviously, you can there's screws in there. It's not all glued together, so that's a really good thing. So you can hack it. And Pedro, you did your own kind of hacking to it, huh? Yeah. So the back of the battery here, battery. Uh, slot mount yeah, thing. So what kind of batteries is it for? Yeah, so this is for the Sony uh, NPF uh, 57. Of course, you get uh, bigger ones that have a longer lasting oh, battery life on there. Okay. But the ones that, um, it doesn't come with any batteries, but the ones that we had lying around were these Sony NPF ones, and that's what it takes. But of course, um, we have a ton of Canon batteries around here. We have the Sony, what is it? We have 10 of them, PL, 10 plus. The LPE6 ones. And we have these very awesome battery holders in the Adafruit shop as well. And we have these for the Canon and the Panasonic ones as well. That's right. Let me show you real quick. If you guys are interested in getting the battery, uh, the battery holders, we have them in the shop. Like Pedro was saying, Panasonic, the Canon, and the regular Sony one, which you don't need because it, it already takes Sony. Yeah. If you guys want to get the Nikon one, let us know, and we'll we'll uh, we'll try to source that. Yeah. yeah. One of the most common Nikon ones. Yeah. We'll try to. Um, tally up what that is. Okay. We'll be able to get those in there. But anyway, a bunch of so, uh, Canon batteries that we have. We have a battery holder. So, of course, we can go ahead and 3D print an exact duplicate of the little slot here yeah. of what the Sony NPF batteries take. Right. So, using that, we can uh, design and 3D print our part here. The battery holders have the little wires that run through the exit ports here. And you can just easily have that slot into here and have it take the awesome. Canon batteries. So we can use all those, what is it, 10, 12 batteries that we have lying around <laughs> everywhere. Yep. And have those, I think they run about a half hour or more, That's depending right. on what the brightness that you're using on them. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying, yeah, pretty, pretty hap, um, hacker friendly. Todd's gonna take a look at being able to control these like with your watch and your smartphones, things like that. So it's gonna be cool. These are in the shop, folks. Get them while they're hot. Um, let's take a look real quick at the the, uh, the listing just to show you um, the listing is, is right here. Beautiful um, photos from <laughs> photos Andrew there. Tingle here. Um, it comes with this awesome mount, the uh, the little hot shoe adapter mount. So it's got a little swivel thing. Plus, uh, on the bottom of that, it has a, uh, a quarter twenty thread. And a little quarter twenty in yeah. here on the bottom. And both of these are pretty much mirrored, so you can swap these around. Yep. Like Pedro saying, you get your kind of control. What is it, 3200 Calvin? 3256. You got your brightness control. And I forgot to mention, on the other side, you have a battery um, meter there, so you can see. Oh, that's um, right. How's our battery doing? Let's take a look. Out, if you go back over, you can see nice. it is three out of four. Cool. Slots there, so pretty cool. And Folks. Of course, this is on there very good, too. Yeah. You can swing this around. Can you show us the part and talk a little bit about this? Like, do you need support material? What did you print it on? Yeah, so we what printed test this on? one on the Ultimaker uh, 2 okay. using the 1.75 filament. Oh, but that doesn't work. <laughs> oh, no, well, it, it, when you try it out, it does work. <laughs> oh, the retraction doesn't work, sorry. <laughs> so this is what the inside of that guy looks like. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit black there, but oh. Well, you got a light. Why don't you use the light? light to light? Yeah. Yeah, I'll hold the light while well, well, we show off the features details. This is amazing how you printed uh, it with very minimal support material. Of course, you do need some material, uh, support material. Where do you need it? Yeah, so we use Simplify 3D to specify exactly where we need that. And it's just two tiny little rows on each little, I'm going to call these like the slot of where this is. Mm -hmm. So you have the way Let's it Let's get it a little bit in. closer. See if folks can see all the features and details. What so was this on printed on, on though? Oh, so this one was actually printed on the M3D. Oh, the printer. little guy? Tiny the little, little $350 printer. printer. Yeah. So very cool. Uh, so, so this is right there. And then two on the little <laughs> corners right here where the slots come out of for the wires. That's amazing. I just can't get over how much. Uh, flip it over because this is the bottom that it actually prints on. And then all this is overhang. 
Yeah, completely over. I think I actually uh, showed an Instagram video of this when it was printing over oh, top yes, of it. Oh, yes, that's right. So yeah, absolutely no ma support material on any of this right here. The only support material we needed was really for right those. Here. Yeah. yeah, otherwise it would be like and pretty. And then tiny little pillars, uh, yeah. four millimeter pillars, because you know inside simplified three D you're yeah. able to specify. Now exactly how much how, how much, much cleanup did you need? Uh, that's it, really. Was those it? you know sort of flick off when they're done. And, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, very easy way. Uh, all of the battery mounts should uh, nice. fit on all of this. And uh, because the Sony MPF battery mounts are so common, um, you could take the, the Fusion 360 file that I made mm, and you can okay. adapt that adapt to it. anything okay. and just adapt any battery for any of the camera gear, monitors, uh, L LED panels. Um, yeah, if you're going to work on a uh, document, uh, you know, a project. Don't you to document your projects, take some photos of your things. Exactly. Is, One of the two things that you, you need for documenting projects is a very good microphone. Oh, if you're doing all the voiceovers. And, of course, uh, lighting to get, uh, you know, close up shots and step by step. Yeah, um, definitely the latter if you're just doing photos. Exactly. Um, yeah, so, folks, if you want to save some monies on this, it is in the shop now and you can get 10% off on it, right? Yep, as cool. always, every week, have it. Uh, discount code for you guys. It's awesome. Use LuxPad this week's That's right. discount code. From this week's project. Pedro, you have a guide as well. Your guide is up. It tells you that should be lined, yeah. uh, live. Uh, go to be live. Learn. <laughs> <laughs> it is live. Uh, it is up on Learn, yeah. And uh, we have the links of you, of course. Thingiverse, it's up. It's all there. Mm -hmm. uh, all step by step it. is yeah. there. Let us know what you guys think about the project. If you want to pick up uh, what would you use your lighting panel for, what would you hack it, let us know. I think uh, a lot of cool projects there. Cool. Okay. All right. We'll get on that, folks. Again, free stuff. You get a printer. You get free shipping. Get the thing. Have Adabot ship you some stuff. <laughs> okay. Right, let's go into so, this week's community make. Uh, okay. And then we'll do a Q&A. We can jump around a little bit. So this week's community make. Uh, first of all, I wanted to just show, uh, uh, show, the, show the folks who printed our lovely Raspberry Pi case. Here, let me, let me queue over to it. I was just queuing up the browser tab. So shout out to you folks. Shout out to Matt. Uh, Matt uh, Hawkins from the UK. I think he runs one of the, uh, the Raspberry Pi YouTube channels. Um, he printed this out and gave a lot of feedback on it. And I, that's, I, I, I used that to, to really revise the design and fine tune it and make it work for everybody in the community. So that's really good. A couple folks printed it out and haven't even tested it yet. Like don't have the Raspberry Pi yet. So. The guys, you might want to print it again. Sorry. Um, but there you go. Uh, qu quite a few people have already printed it out. Thank you guys so much and, uh, for offering your, uh, your input. Another cool one, this one is from a Mr. Uh, Garion. Uh, he printed and, and put together, assembled the mini, uh, mini uns, mini instrument, not to get sued, mm -hmm. uh, which is a mini controller. Uh, this was a really cool project. Uh, I really like how he did the, the different multicolored. Uh, little potentiometers. This is pretty cool. Very cool looking. Yeah, so that's really cool. Uh, another one, um, which I unfortunately don't have loaded here. I did, but that's not there. Uh, it's well, I guess you know we'll bring this up in the in the Q and A. This one here. Okay. So there you go. Community makes. Um, we got a lot of a lot of a lot of these are already posted on the blog, of mm -hmm. course. So if you guys want to get your project shared, you want to have a platform to to talk about your projects. Uh, drop us a line. Yep. In the in the in the places in the YouTube's, and put something worse. Cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving right along. Uh, you want to do Q and A next? Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this week's Q and A. Okay. Q and A. Got a couple questions this week. Start yeah. off with this super long one by who is this? Uh, this is from George Rubbles. So this is for you, Pedro. This is. Yeah, so this is regarding the Daft Punk helmet. Um, it's kind of long here, but he's basically. Um, you know, saying how we could create the buck in, uh, I think, a plaster mold as well. So this is for vacuum forming your uh, Daft Punk helmet? Yeah, so the visor, the visor? as we were the saying Thomas last version. week. Thomas's version. Or not yeah. Thomas, I'm sorry, uh, Guy Manuel. Guy, Manuel. Yeah. Guy Manuel. So because of the, the, com the big uh, overhang of where the top of the visor uh, goes, uh, when we were talking to some of our guys who could do some of the vacuum forming, it was a little bit too big for their vacuum former. And then we were talking to um, one of the engineers at uh, local around here was like, oh my God, we have to send this to like a five axis mill and we'll add like 20 pound uh, foam or it's going to cost like hundreds of dollars. And it's like, uh, oh no. you know, you know, hundreds a of lot dollars? of people aren't going to have, you know, access to that. So there's a lot of sort of, uh, I gotcha things like mm -hmm. you can't really. 
get it made because of the pull strength, yeah, I think you were saying? just that we don't have access to that. If you guys do have access to that, luckily I did uh, 3D model all of the, like, the negatives for if you wanted to try making this out of a plaster mold and make the buck out of that. So I'll be releasing the uh, files for that. And I've also re will release the files for making just the buck itself, print that out. Wow. So if you can vacuum form out, vacuum form, uh, use that to vacuum form. Right. If, say if you have like, you know, something that's bigger than a 12 by 12 uh, vacuum former. You've put a lot of work. effort and energy into different materials as well. You're trying transparent warbler, mm -hmm. trying to heat that, trying to get that working. And it didn't, it didn't conform too well. Yeah, one of the, the problems we have is that um, just the heater. We don't have a heater to heat up That's right. something. The, we don't have a big oven material, yeah, yeah, or the oven or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we will be releasing the files. So okay. if you guys want to take a shot at it, you can. Absolutely. Well, thank you for the question. Next up, it's from J H seven seven Slee. Any plans to sell this as an add-on on the Pi Zero bundle? For us to use without access to a 3D printer, I would like to complete. I would like a complete enclosure for my Pi Zero when I get a chance to order one, as it will be used inside a car, a cabin, not under the hood. Uh, it'll it'll help immensely keeping the dirt and dust off the Zero itself. Yeah, so I'm sure that we are getting some injection molded cases made. Yeah, probably so in the future. Hopefully, yep. yeah. So in the future, should be able to purchase those quite soon. Okay, well that's good. Good to know. And then, of course, we also have the acrylic version case from Phil B, if you want to get that. Yeah, if you want to get the protector for that. Yeah, yeah which would be good. OK. Thank you for the question. Next up, this is from John Smith. If you want to measure fillets, there is a special tool. It, well, it's acrylic plate with holes in it uh, from the company Rot Ring. Uh, but I, th when I think of it, it would make a great 3D print. I think I will design something. Maybe it would be a great layer by layer or a 3D printing video. Well, John Smith. Uh, somebody from the community, Tuna, actually made it. This is so awesome. So Tuna uh, wrote in the description that he was watching my Lair by Lair, the, the one you commented on, and he was like, you know what? I should take this and solve this problem. So he did. He made a, uh, a little widget here, a little gauge for filament. So here he is uh, measuring the fillet for the, 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 I think the third generation Apple TV remote, which is awesome. It's four millimeters. and uh, here he is doing his iPad, the front, the back, his iPhone. It's awesome. This is so. This is a really cool one. I've seen other designs on Thingiverse too that kind of are in pieces, and you have to kind of assemble them and stack them up. This one's a really simple approach to it. So uh, actually, Pedro, do you want to show it on the overhead, real quick? Yeah, super easy little design that has all of them already on one instead of numbers. having on multiple different mm -hmm. um, ones, uh, like you were saying in that last design that you found, and it works pretty damn good. Yeah. You can so really see here that this is it's it's a three. three. Yeah, it's a three. Look at that. So if you guys want to measure nice. your fillets out, uh, check this out. So thank you, Tuna. Uh, it's, it's, on, it's linked below. It's on the Adafruit blog, and it's on Thingiverse. So you can download it. It takes like literally like uh, 10, 10 minutes to print. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Very simple. I really like the design here. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tunia. Awesome shout outs and to you, sir. Thank you, um, John Smith, for the question. Very cool. It's awesome. Everything's definitely be using this on a lot of our designs now. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Moving on. This one's from uh, Simlosis 3D. Hi. Just a random question, but my Persia i3 seems to have a lost connection in its Z, Z East end stops. I've tried a new micro switch, but even that hasn't worked. So just wondering if anyone has any ideas. Many thanks. Yeah, I think this could be maybe a wiring problem. Maybe a wiring problem, maybe a firmware problem. Definitely post this oh, well. in the Google Plus community page for the 3D printers. Yeah. Those guys are always willing to help yeah. with any of the firmware like coding stuff for that. Um, one of the reasons why you don't, we don't like the Z uh, probe It's um, not a Z approach. probe. It's a Z end stop. The Z end stops, yeah. It's, um, oh. It's not a probe. It's a Z end stop. Yeah. There you go. Uh, maybe I, it's not clicking. Um, we kind of have that problem sometimes on the Rep2. We've been meaning to oh, change yeah, that yeah, out, yeah. too. So they are kind of faulty, but I don't know. It could, it could be a variety of different things. Yeah. So check out the support forums. Um, got a lot of people on there, too. Somebody should be able to help you out on there. Yeah. Yeah. But OK. Good luck with that. And um, yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, David SN is asking, uh, how about making a new version of the Pi Girl using the new Raspberry Pi? Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a tutorial because the new Pi is perfect design for this uh, Pi Girl Zero project. Smiley face. Yeah, yeah so, totally. Uh, 
definitely oh that's already in the works i think it's going to be modeled after the game boy micro yes totally so if you haven't seen the game Boy micro check out the form factor it's going to be kind of the horizontal psp type mm -hmm. um i'll try to throw in as many buttons as i can because i know people like their buttons um one of the things though um is that uh, lamar and, and todd and phil b uh, have been working on trying to get the kernel packages to work with the Pi TFT helper script. So right out of the box, it's unfortunately not working. Mm -hmm. But um, there, it does with a couple of uh, kernel hacks and things, like updating binary. Of course, some of the other things that need to be updated, too, is getting the audio out, so mm -hmm. getting a good amp. Good deck, uh, yeah. So we're working on it. Yep, it's being worked on. Yeah, all, all hands on deck. <laughs> so thank you. We are definitely doing it. Next one is from Jason Cox. This is awesome. How is this only? at 5,800 views. These things are more expensive to buy than an inexpensive 3D printer. And this one is customizable. This is on the how to make a Bluetooth camera slider. Yeah, so a lot of the people in production and film um, probably don't have time to sit there and build one. But that's, you know, a lot of DIYers are filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's because it just hasn't been promoted like every other week. Uh, yeah. we, we tend to promote it once a week, and that's it. If you didn't catch it, we're sorry. We don't have the bandwidth. We don't have a whole marketing team behind us. We kind of are it. We make the project, and we spend a lot of time making the making sure that our uh, our, our design works, our code works. Mm -hmm. uh, that you know, there's no you know, the all the photos and stuff for the assembly are all set out for you. Yeah. It's very thorough, so we we have very little bandwidth to actually promote the project, exactly, which yeah. is insane. So that's why we would really love it if you guys start uh, sharing it on your social channels, put it up on Reddit. Let people know about these projects, you know, share them, and, and I think that might help us out a lot. We've never really asked for any help, but I thought it would be really nice to start doing that. Yeah, um, go ahead so. and share it to anybody, uh, want any of your friends in your inner circle that or, is I'm telling you, man, put it on Reddit. Here, yeah. Like, yeah, one of the reasons we don't put it on Reddit ourselves is we found that anytime you try to promote anything of yourself, your own stuff, you might not like it. Yeah, it's more authentic <laughs> if someone else shares yeah. it. Yeah. It's but, like, hey, I found this. So. Yeah, don't worry, though. Uh, for the what? views, for the views aren't. Oh no no. Yeah, get your points. Like get the points. It's all good. Yeah, no, I was gonna say. Don't worry. Um, we're not paying the bills here on based on views. <laughs> oh. We're getting all the sales, so <laughs> um, people are buying all of the components required to make this, uh, even if it's not a lot <laughs> of views on it. But yeah, thanks for definitely it. support us though um, when you can, and uh, that's just one of the things that we wanted to share. We, we you know we're, we're wary of exactly. it. So thank you, Jason Cox, for your concern. Let us know. Uh, Syed is asking, I'm an electrical guy, and this sure has inspired me to get started with CAD and 3D printing. Great stuff. Thank you, Syed. Uh, this is why we do it. Um, mm -hmm. Sharing, there's a lot of people asking, why can't, you know, what if I don't have a 3D printer, or this and that, so, or can you build me this project? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really nice to see people getting inspired who are on the, the electrical spectrum, like uh, more, yep. more on that side, thinking about designing and that is using our 3D job printing. Here. Yep. Yeah, so yay, it's working. Thank you, Syed. Thank you for the great comment. This is from Play the Game. Couldn't stop talking about how many adapters we have to buy from you. I'm thinking you, you know, most people have them laying around all over the place. I think he's talking about yeah. I think he's talking about um, maybe on Ask an Engineer or something or like buy the adapter for the Pi Zero or something. Um, yeah, so yeah, a lot know. of people don't know that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the we're actually everybody who's who's selling these are actually selling them at a loss. Mm -hmm. Like we buy them for like eight dollars and we sell them for five dollars. Yeah, there's like so. no mar there's like negative margin on these things. Are you <laughs> kidding me? It's crazy. So, so that's probably why you hear a lot of people talking about the cables. <laughs> yeah, and get the bundles. So that's, that's so there you go. There you go. That's that's you know we're transparent. So mm -hmm. that's that's what it is. Play the game, man. You gotta play the game. <laughs> you gotta play the game of distribution and retail. Yep. All right. This one's from uh, MLG. Oatmeal. So I'm a beginner with this stuff. I have a Pi 2, and I really want to do some cool stuff with it. Any suggestions? Yeah, I would definitely recommend like uh, installing, uh, get, get familiar with Linux, get familiar with your sudo commands, and installing RetroPi so you can play some emulators, play well, some games. The coolest first projects to do is to bring back your childhood and yeah. install some So get in that, games. and then once you have it, all the wires hanging out and, and you got your controller and stuff, Think about 3D printing or putting it inside of another enclosure or something, like packaging mm -hmm. it up. So that's how I would start. Yeah. But yeah, it's always fun to play something. So exactly. That's, that's the first one everyone likes to play. It also comes with Minecraft, like it's built in. So check out Minecraft. And uh, yep. Thank you for the question. Next one, this one's from Nicole Sara. Uh, how much would it cost 
uh, to buy it from you guys if you made it for me. I have no tutorials for this. So we do have the Adafruit Jobs form. You can post up your request for, for building stuff, but it probably didn't cost as much as a printer. So that's what I always say. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, costing. it's going to cost more than the printer probably, especially mm -hmm. since if you add in the cost for all the components, and so then again. You're um, not learning much if you don't build it. Uh, that and think about what someone's hourly rate is. Yeah, 100 um, bucks an hour, and these things take, you know, four to five hours, depending on what it is. Mm -hmm. So it's ne it's. It, it makes more sense to make it yourself. That's why we're doing it. So exactly. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll get one of these answers, like, can you make it for me? How much to buy it? So we like to share it because we just need to keep iterating on that one. Yeah, obviously, we cannot. <laughs> um, oh, we yeah, have we don't do have a bandwidth. Weekly, yeah, yeah, we, we do we, a weekly personally projects. don't have the bandwidth to <laughs> make it for absolutely you guys, no so. time for that. But thank yeah. you for the question. Next one, this one's from Johnny Weiwei2. Is there a through-hole tool? Oh, there is a through-hole tool in Fusion, just FYI, so the holes aren't dynamic. Thank you, Thank you for that. That That's is why you updated that. We had this discussion at the uh, right. beginning of the show. That's right. Thank you, Thank you, Johnny, for your comment. That inspired me to check out that whole mm -hmm. thing. I know how to use it now, and hopefully all you guys know how to use it now, too. All right. This one's from Diego Sanchez Garcia. Can I connect it to a PS3, PS4, or Xbox? This is on the DIY Bluetooth gamepad. Uh, yeah, so the Bluetooth gamepad is, is recognized as a normal HDI a human interface device mm -hmm. standard with Bluetooth. So anything that supports a, a Bluetooth keyboard, it's going to work with this module. Um, folks, if you guys know if a, if, a, if a standard Bluetooth keyboard works with your PS3 or PS4 or Xbox, let us know, because we don't actually have a game console, Yeah, they is crazy. Like a, a Xbox 360 somewhere in the attic. Yeah, the but it has a blue ring of death, I think. Or no, it still works. No, it's, it still yeah, works. It's a, yeah. So let us know. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's. I just want to tell you at least that the, the, it's, it's recognized as a regular mm -hmm. Bluetooth keyboard. Thank you for the question, Diego. Next one, this is from Genomes Sixify. Is there any way to smooth NinjaFlex or SemiFlex? I don't think there's any safe way to do it, but there might be some way to do it. Like I, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't think I haven't tried it. Yeah, just haven't tried, tried it. it. Yeah. At this point, probably we, we don't know. If you were to put like XTC, it would crack because it's flexible. Mm. It's flexible mm. stuff, so I'm not sure. You can't really sand it because it's rubber. Can you sand rubber? I uh, don't believe we've tried that. Yeah, so <laughs> maybe. We're not sure. Let us know if you folks know any. Uh, you can tell us in the comments below and uh, help people out. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for the, for the question, Gomez. Next one is from Peter Chuckle. Uh, what if I don't have a 3D printer? Uh, you can check out uh, 3dhubs.com. Check out your local library. Check out your library, Microspace. School. You can send it out to get a uh, maker, make some money, give them some money to, to, to have their printer, they're renting them out, you know? Mm -hmm. So there you yeah. go, there's many options for you. Uh, and all our labor layers are starting to promote uh, 3D hubs, so check them out. Check, check it out. out. There's someone in your backyard that probably has one. Thank you for the question, Peter. Next one, this is from Dylan Hendricks. What kind of keyboard did you use? Oh, this is on the 10-inch riser. It seems desktop. like all of our Pride projects we're not using the, the, Kino, the Kano keyboard. Yeah, so this is Kano, K-A-N-O. Dot me. Uh, the dot I've mentioned me. this like a couple times, yeah. It's Go ahead, a, follow them on Instagram so you can bug them, comment on all of their yeah, photos, maybe and they'll, ask if they'll release this as a separate. Yeah, we would um, love to carry it in the shop. It's a really nice keyboard. Mm -hmm. Uh, we bought the kit for 100 bucks, and it's a $100 keyboard at this point. <laughs> but we got a nice pie as well with it. Thank you for the question. Next one is from Greg asking, hey, I'm, a, I'm in the market for a 3D printer. I've narrowed down my options to uh, the PrinterBot Plus or the FlashForge Creative Pro. The FlashForge Creative Pro, of course, uh, it, seems to, it looks like a better 3D printer overall. However, the PrinterBot has a large print area, and that's what's more important to me. Any thoughts on these two printers? Are there any others in that price range worth looking at? Let's answer the first part. Uh, so the PrinterBot Plus, it does have a bigger build plate. They're actually both priced at the same price. They're both made out of some really good materials. They're both really rigid. Uh, one, uh, so let's talk about the, the actual type of extruder. Um, the Flash Recruit has a dual extruder. It has two mm -hmm. of them. So you can do NinjaFlex right out of the box, copper fill, PLA, PLA ABS. Uh, the printer bot can do that same stuff, uh, but without the dual extruder. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both heated beds. One's bigger. Um, the let's talk about some. Now it really comes down to I think features the too. The gotchas are going to have to definitely be not being able to physically adjust your bed. Oh, you can do that with ZPro, but you really have to fine tune it in the software. 
it's a lot more simple if while it's printing, yeah. you can go up. Yeah, turn I do knob, find it a little bit. Not like, have to stop your print. I do waste a lot of time in like can canceling the whole print. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I have to reapply tape or not, depending mm -hmm. on how you're doing it. And you, you know, doing Having the software. Having to do it through yeah. software is not always. It's a, it feels like a little bit slower. It, sounds, it feels like yeah. a little bit slower with it's the. It's definitely Pro. a lot noisier. The printer. Okay, off. so you get you get some noise. Uh, in terms of like build area, although it looks slim, it actually has a power supply. It's hanging off on the side, plus the spool. That's and right. uh, you have to be wary. Mm -hmm. right? You have to be wary of where the build's coming out at you. Like sometimes it hits. Uh, we've had it like, you know, brushed up against the wall and it hit the wall and it kind of like. Push I'm itself. It'll it'll that. survive the fall to the ground, but you don't want that to happen. Uh, another thing is there's that no onboard LCD. Yeah, there's a feature there. Uh, the firmware uh, is another thing too. Uh, the Sailfish has all these like neat little pause change filament things. Mm -hmm. You have to do all that sort of manually. Mm -hmm. and there's um, you know specific um, commands to load and unload filament. Right. Um, you can have it, like you were saying have it pause at a specific um, height if you wanted to change your material mm -hmm. out. So and another thing is it comes with a heated, uh, the acrylic uh, kit to 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 You can close fully it enclose off. it. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. more easier to enclose the uh, Flash Forge Creative uh, Pro yeah. because it comes with all that, the door, the top hood, the printer bot. You'd have to sort, definitely build something for that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other gotchas is, yeah, the Z probe. Um, some people it like it. Some people don't. By default, it only. Uh, probes, I think, three spots. Okay. Um, so, like, I think it was like the back left corner is always like, you know, unleveled. Uh, not always, but it, it really depends on how, how how you get yours. Exactly. Um, but they're both really good printers. It really comes down to you. Um, one has features more than the other one. The other one has a bigger build plate. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as like other ones in the price range, um, for at twelve ninety nine. What's the price? Um, they're, like, we're actually going to be ones? running. Um, I think it's pretty. Oh, there's a rebate or something. It's going to be a rebate, yeah, for the Flash Forge Grave Pro, where it's two hundred dollars off. Oh man, so that so, one's even cheaper. Yeah, it's going to be even cheaper. For, it's a tough decision, uh, for a Greg. While, it yeah. is a really tough decision. Uh, make sure you check out um, Makes Shootout and X Y. Uh, oh, not X Y. Um, check out 3D Hubs's reviews and, and really, you know, weigh it on. Uh, everybody, you know, a lot of the the people who own both, a lot of people who own the Flash Grave Pro love it. A lot of people who own the printer bot love it, mm -hmm. so it's they're, it's they're both be, great machines. So yeah, you it just seems really like we have out. to do a little bit more tweaking on the printer bot. But yep. if the you do size learn, you do learn more with your printer bot. You're yeah. gonna learn more about mechanics and how it works. That so. and uh, the G code. Yeah, you'll some sometimes some of it a lot takes more, more time. Of a G code. <laughs> oh yeah, you definitely will. You yeah. have to. Oh, well, there you go, Greg. Those are our thoughts. Take it with a grain of salt, or however, you know. But don't take my word for it. And then like the the rainbow happens. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. That is going to be it. That was a total of 16 questions. Whew, we went by that. Yeah, remember. Hour long show, folks. If you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, remember this week's discount code is LUXPAD. Get right. you 10% off. Off um, your LUXPAD. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if when the Flash Forge, um, the rebate, I don't know if you'll be able to combine that, but go ahead and try. I think you might be able to, so it's going to be even cheaper. We didn't tell you that. Free shipping, of course, because it's going to be over the $200 uh, limit for the free shipping, of course, okay. and you're going to get all those free goodies uh, while yep. supplies last. Okay. That's going to be it for the show, folks. We're going to leave you off with some links, of course, the learning Adafruit system. The, Adaf the learning Adafruit system. The learning Adafruit learning system. <laughs> Learn.adafruit.com. A, a lot of people are, are always making um, all this. All the, all the folks here at Adafruit are always making. Yep. So every one of our projects has a step-by-step -step yeah. picture completely all spelled out for you. That's where all those guides live. Yep. So Example um, codes and, and, and things of mm -hmm. that nature are all there. One of the easiest ways to get started on 3 print projects. OK, cool. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Think of us in the likes. So check it out. The blog every Thursday, why the hour, sometimes increments of, increments of 30 minutes. We yeah. have new blog, blog posts, posts from the community. Of, of community projects. So we want to, of course, let you guys know the whole lineup of shows starts off with Wearable Art House with Becky Stern. Check out Becky Stern doing flash and forward uh, projects, combining e-textiles in electronics. Later on in the evening at 7.30 starts our show and tell, where That's you right. can come on and show off your awesome project you've been working on. We're there every week, along yep. with Tony D, Phil B sometimes stops by, and yep. of course, Phil and Lamar. Yep. Um, Come on the show, show off your stuff, uh, even even like your makerspace or, or retro gear, mm -hmm. and get a free sticker. 
You get yeah. a Ask Me On The Show and Tell a sticker. A whole half hour of that, immediately following that, 8 An o'clock. An hour of Lamar and Phil, Ask Engineer, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, Open Source, and more. Sometimes even free top win, secret things. Win free prizes, really good okay. prizes. Um, and you get to ask an engineer at the end of the show. So there you go. It's a full hour of Lamar and Phil. And then, like, it seems like every other day or every day sometimes at around, like, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. Eastern time, the desk of Lady Ada where she live streams what she's working on. Circuit uh, designs. She's engineering, PCB designs. So much cool stuff going on. Awesome. So there you go, folks. Um, Thank you all again <laughs> for tuning in every week. Be sure to get on those orders because tomorrow... Uh, the 11th is uh, one of the last days to get your stuff. Mm -hmm. So there you go. All right. Thank you all uh, for tuning in. Until next time. Until, uh, <laughs> I'm falling apart. Until next time, remember to keep on making. See you. Bye, everybody.